What is actually serving me? What's actually working for me? And what can I kind of remove out of my routine and keep it simple? I made this video here because a lot of people want to know. And I want to kind of explain, you know, the story as to how I evolved throughout the years. What's going on guys? It's Braden from Advancement Hockey Advising here. And today we have a really fun video here where we're gonna talk about my game day routine in hockey. So hopefully you guys enjoy. Honestly, I did not think I was gonna get this amount of questions on what kind of routine I use to prepare and everything. All my clients ask me like, what do I do before the game to prepare and all that kind of stuff. And, and typically like, I, I didn't think it was that big of a deal. I kind of just did my own thing. And I was pretty superstitious about it and stuff in the beginning, but we'll get to that in a sec. But yeah, more, more and more people wanna know like, hey, like what do you do to prepare what are the things like that that you can use to optimize my game but before the game and all that now, I'm kind of flattered that people are asking me but I, I honestly don't think it's that big of a deal you got to find what works for you and run with it okay I made this video here because a lot of people want to know and I want to kind of explain you know the story as to how I evolved throughout the years we actually did a video with uh, Stefano Quintali that you can find the video up here if you click on it it's an interview with him and also a video with uh, JS Jaguar like a NHL legend right he was a legendary NHL goalie did great in his career you can also find the video up here if you click it but basically both goalies explained how they used to have a super like regimented superstitious routine if something went wrong every all hell broke loose right everything went uh, terribly but the thing is is that they, they've realized over time the more they loosen up the more they just do something that gets them feeling good gets them loose that's what actually made them play at their best and I've noticed the same thing in my career as well I was super regimented did probably like an hour and a half if not more of prep before for a game if something went wrong then I'd feel off or whatever but I've realized like none of that's actually really important what's important is that you just do the things that get you in the zone that get you going you know you don't need a super complicated routine keep it simple and the more you do that the more you'll feel good on the ice you'll feel loose you'll feel confident you'll feel ready to go so I just want to preface the video by saying that before diving into the weeds and all the different things that I kind of do in my routine by the way are you liking the video right now if you are what would an AHA video be without me asking you to absolutely destroy that like Button. And because you guys are such loyal followers, loyal fans, you know, here's a picture of a baby penguin. Aww. Super cute, right? If you're new here, if you like this kind of content, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss another video moving forward. Back to the video now. All right, so when we dive into the specifics of my routine here, it typically starts the night before. I really like to have, you know, a bit of a higher carb meal, not too close before bedtime. Very normal, like, to my day-to-day -day approach. I usually eat dinner, like, maybe three and a half or four hours before before bedtime. I'll typically, like, mix in more potatoes uh, or rice in that case, you know, the night before, just to carbo load up. I don't know the exact science behind this, honestly. I don't even know if it's true, but I've noticed it's something that gives me energy uh, for, for the other the next day that's typically what I do I like to unwind whatever I need to you know get done I just get done in, in that case but I don't do anything typically crazy the night before I just make sure that I don't stress too too much I do relaxing stuff before bed like I typically do. You know, I get my, my nice eight hours or whatever I need of sleep. I really prioritize sleep and, and go to bed at a really early time before a game. Afterwards, the next day, I'll get up, I'll uh, do my morning routine, you know, that I've talked about in the past. You know, you can check it up here if you really want to see my, my daily routine. I'll do the typical morning routine. I'll um, eat a really healthy breakfast. And this is where it, it starts to change. I really dial in eating clean. Uh, I'm really big on that on, on game day. It's really, really important. So I either have two meals or three it really depends what time the game is if it's a later game I'll have three meals if it's an earlier game then I'll just have two and I'll have my third one after the game but uh, the, the meals before the game have to be super super clean that's one thing for example a, a meal before my game would be a really nice grass-fed grass-finished uh, steak some sweet potatoes sweet potato fries that I make myself that that aren't fried but are more baked and all that stuff eat that and maybe uh, you know so, some broccoli on the side really like simple clean meals because I want that energy moving forward so that's the biggest thing All also too, like after my, my breakfast, my first meal, I like to get moving throughout the day if I have that luxury, which typically I do. I either go for like a walk or I do something or, or I hit the spin, like the spin bike for a couple uh, minutes, like maybe 10 minutes or so. Do a couple quick bursts and all that. Maybe do a couple uphill sprints or something just to get the blood moving. Nothing that's gonna tire me out, but something that's just like keeping my body moving throughout the day. I typically didn't like to do pregame skates. Uh, for whatever reason, I never felt as good that night if I did a pregame skate. Uh, some guys love it, so it's something to consider, but for 
myself. I didn't enjoy those. I prefer doing like a quick bike ride or a quick, um, you know, walk or, or a couple sprints or something like that. I felt that worked better for me, but each guy is different in this case. Now, I know for some guys too, they love the pregame naps, whereas other guys don't do it. Me, I'm kind of a hybrid. It really depends. Some nights, if I feel like I didn't really get all the sleep I needed that night, I'll strategically do my pregame nap before my last meal before the game, because if I do it afterwards, like I wake, like if I can't really go to bed after I eat something, then I feel weird after waking up. So I really have to nap before my next meal. That, that's just me. Everyone's different. But I take maybe, depends on the nap, 30 to, to 75 minutes though is typically the length of the nap I'll need. Most of the time I'd say I get away without it. Only sometimes if I do have the time and I have the luxury to do it and I, I feel like I need it, I'll take a quick nap. So that kind of moves on to what I do once I get to the rink. So like I said, over the years I've evolved. I'm much more relaxed now. Before it used to be like super intense and it used to be uh, very regimented. But now the one thing I do though is once I get to the rink, like I really make it a mental note. Okay, now it's go time. This is what I focus on. Everything I'm doing is like hockey, like goal focus on doing what I need to do to get ready for this game. It's all hockey all the time. I'm not thinking about my girlfriend. I'm not thinking about homework. I'm not thinking about business meetings, nothing like that. It's time to, to actually play hockey. So as soon as I get to the rink, that's where the switch turns on to get in the zone. I typically get to the rink now, maybe, you know, I'm in my semi-pro career now, so I get there maybe 40, 45 minutes before a game or before the warm-up starts on the ice. Back in my, my actual college days, it was at least an hour before. Sometimes, you know, an hour 15, nothing too, too crazy. Like before that, I used to get there an hour and a half before or whatever, but I've realized, you know, it's too much. So, you know, back when I was very serious, it was like an hour, an hour 15 before. Now it's like 40, 45 minutes before it's all I need. At this point now, all I do is I get there, I typically change it to my Under Armour you know warm up stuff right away like I say hi to the guys and all that stuff and then I change and then I kind of keep it loose talk to the guys tape my stick keep it loose while I'm taping my stick you know because I like talking to the guys and all that kind of stuff do that that takes probably be between the time where I come in change it to my Under Armour tape my stick maybe like 15 minutes, something like that. And at that point, there's usually like half an hour, 25 minutes before the, the on ice warm up. I like to at this point really start getting in the zone and uh, put my headphones on. I go do a dynamic warm up. So it's basically like I'll do like some shuffles, you know, some karaoke's back inside, a little bit to get the blood flowing, a couple jumping jacks. And then from there, I just do dynamic stretches, get all the parts of my body loosened up. Then I do more activation type stuff. So whatever, I don't know, maybe like a couple burpees, a couple like not, not jumping jacks, but the, the big ones where you kind of like do the star shape like jump stars or whatever they're called uh, do some of those Th those really get my body activated I really feel like my whole body's like ready to go feels tighter feels more explosive once that's done I do like a couple you know skips or whatever whatever to really get the explosiveness down high knees like jumps up in the air and then I do some sprints and then that's pretty much it it takes me about 10 minutes usually to do my my full like dynamic warm-up but I can condense it down more I can do it in five minutes if I really have to so I do that and I feel ready to go at this point my body's like feeling warm might get a slight sweat in which is, is the state I want to be in then I go to the the room it's typically like some guys are talking or whatever I'm typically I'm typically a little bit more quiet but if a guy asks me a question or wants to like do some some locker room talk with me or whatever I'll I'll you know give it back or whatever it's I'm not like so in the zone where I can't talk to anyone I like to keep it more light before that I used to love playing sewer for though like most guys who play hockey know what sewer is especially when you get to the junior level but I used to love doing that after my dynamic warm-up it's in uh, senior league and semi-pro they don't really do it anymore it's something that when I had a bit more time, when I show up an hour, an hour 15 before the game, I loved playing that. It was so fun. You kept it light and uh, you're, you just felt warmed up and ready to go. Don't overdo it with sewer. You know, you don't want to play for like half an hour, 45 minutes uh, before a game because it's going to tire you out. But if you just play for like 10 minutes, you know, you typically feel pretty warm, loose and uh, good to go. Overall, that's pretty much it. I put my gear on. I usually get dressed in like five minutes. When it comes to this, I'm a freak of nature and getting my gear on in like five minutes or even less. Like I've gone on probably in like a minute and a half before if I, if I I really had to. So I get addressed pretty quick. Coach comes in, gives a speech, go to the bathroom real quick, pee, and basically good to good to go before the game. A couple things I want to mention is I take electrolytes. It's a company called Element. You know, we're not sponsored by them, anything like that, but I love taking those electrolytes before the game. And I have a quick little, like some fruits, like apples, clementines, like anything like that to keep me going throughout the game. I like to stay away from Gatorade. I'm not a huge fan of Gatorade, but everybody has their preferences and all that stuff. 
I just kind of keep those keep me going throughout the game and all that. And then on the ice, on the warm up, I try and keep it loose, get my hands going, try and get a couple like uh, bursts of energy where I'm skating and all that on the on ice warm up, but typically keep it pretty loose and just focus on getting some stick handles in, getting some passes in, some shots in, turning, all that kind of stuff, skating. You know, I just get focused on that, but I keep it loose. I don't have like a segmented routine or anything like that. So overall, that's pretty much it for the pregame routine. Hopefully you guys got some value out of this. I know it's a bit of a, a rant and a, and a longer video. Me just kind of talking about this, but hopefully this helps you out. Kind of makes you think, okay, what is actually serving me? What's actually working for me? And what can I kind of remove out of my routine and keep it simple? What, what's a way that I can do it where I feel loose, I feel ready to go, and I feel like I can, you know, beat the opponent uh, once I get out there. So that's kind of the questions I want you to ask yourself as a takeaway uh, from this video, from hearing me kind of rant about my routine here. So hopefully this helped you guys. If it did, absolutely destroy that like button if you haven't already. And if you're new here, consider hitting that subscribe button and notification bell so you never miss another video moving forward. Also too, throughout this video, if you had any questions, anything whatsoever you want to talk to me about, feel free to drop a comment down below or send us a private email at info at ahadvising.com and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. All right guys, that's it for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. We'll catch you on that next one.